Hey, everybody. Randy Patterson here with Boomerosity. Man, do I have a special treat for you? I know I always tell you that, but doggone it, they just keep happening. What can I say? If you're into blues, and you know we are here at Boomerosity, but um, if you're into blues, you've heard of Buddy Guy. If you haven't, then you're really not into the blues. What can I say? You're just not. Go back to the drawing board. Start all over again. Start with Buddy Guy. But through a mutual friend, um, we both know the same person as uh, Greg and uh, Greg Guy and I both know the same person, good friend of mine. And um, he, long story short, she was instrumental in getting this conversation you're about to watch with Greg Guy, who is a son of Buddy Guy. He tours with Buddy. They run Buddy's um, club there in Chicago, the Blues Club called Legends. He also has this studio that you see advertised here behind me called G Hive Studios. And you can uh, you can learn a lot from this interview. It's very fun, very laid back. And um, gosh, what a thrill it was to talk to Greg. Great guy, great musician, chip off the old block. So um, anyway, I hope that you'll listen to it, share it with your fellow blues fans. And uh, if you would, please hit like, hit subscribe with whatever venue you're listening or watching this from, whether it be YouTube, Star Worldwide Networks, or the podcast platform you're listening to this on, and uh, share it with your friends. Let them know so that we can um, we can grow this circle of friends here. So without any further ado, here is my first of what I hope are many more interviews to come in the future with Greg Guy. Until next time, this is Randy Patterson with Boomerosity. Take care. Thank you for taking the time. It's um, it's an honor to talk to you. I've been aware of you for quite a while and of course i've been a huge fan of your dad so that goes without saying but uh right. and through our good friend angelia we've we've got this interview together so i'm i'm thrilled to be able to talk to you and it wasn't intentional but gosh with it black history month man i'm i'm, I'm stoked here to be able to <laughs> kind of blend the two together and get your thoughts and one of the first things i would like to ask you greg is um first of all I mean, obviously, we're here to talk about music, and but with this month being Black History Month, you know, the thing that come to my mind was when Prince, who I know was a big influence of yours, remember when he went through that deal where he, he was combating the music industry and he he wrote the word slavery on himself uh -huh. and, and all that. Do you have any unique or specific thoughts about that with, with regards to Black History Month? Because I know artists in general are really having a problem being able to make a good living with their yeah. craft that we all live. And it's hard for the buck to get from us to you. It kind of still looks like Prince knew what he was talking about there. What, do you, oh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, he definitely knew what he was talking about. I mean, that... Uh... And when he, when he said, when he put the, the word slave on his face, that means that uh, I guess like most uh, record labels or companies were trying to own stuff that he was doing. So they he was saying like as as if he was a slave to the, you know, to the music and so to speak. And that still goes on today, uh, you know, with, with people that, I, that I'm around now. What I, I don't put slave on my face, but I can actually uh, produce, sit, write, and arrange a song in my own studio at home, but then you have a label uh, that's certain labels that was trying to get me, and they wanted me to sign. When I signed that, they were saying that they would own my music that I created and produced. So I'm like, yeah, I totally get the slave on this, you know. I totally. <laughs> I think the other phrase for slavery in the music business is called 360 deals. From what I've heard, you know, they own everything: your your image, yeah. your songs, your publishing. The tour, the merch, everything, and it's and it's, that's that, right, right. I'm gonna say it, that's so unfair. You know what I mean? That's just, you know what I mean. It, it'll probably be a better, uh, it'll probably be a lot better if they were just like, oh no, we we will do this and we will do that and we will do this, but we don't want to own it. We will help you. So it's just like, uh, let me see, how can I say it? Uh, if I write a song right here and and do the music and and I just say I give it to you and you go. And 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 it becomes number one on the charts and all that, and you know, fifteen cents a record sale or whatever. They would you would get uh, say if it was if it bought out to a a, a hundred million dollars, I probably would get like twenty out of the hundred million. Wow. Yeah. 
It's crazy. Yeah. And, 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 you know, back in the day, especially like when your dad was first starting out, I mean, the record labels actually had studios like RCA and, you know, Capitol right. and some of the others. And now they don't, you've got to front the bill to record. Exactly. You've got to, you've got to bring the whole fan base with you and then they'll take over everything you have. You know? Right. right. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, they, they also, uh, you, you know, you can have the music how you want it. This is, this is where I want the music to go. Then you you also have people that are standing behind you and, and say change this, you know, take this and do that, do that. But if I made it, I like it. I mean, why are you changing it? You know what I mean? It's right. I'm satisfied with it. I'm happy with it. I don't want somebody standing on my shoulder saying like put a put a horn right there. I, I don't want horns on the song. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and they got people, yeah, they got people behind you who will do that. And and your your line could be like, I love you so much, and they'd be like, you know what, put baby in there. And it's it's weird. Like, I don't want the word baby, and I just want I love you so much. And before you know it, that song is being put out with that word baby in there, and whoever the label is can pretty much own that song just for that one word they put in there, baby. After Never you mind sign. you wrote everything else, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> but one word sign. can be quite powerful of whoever owns that word, right? So yeah. <laughs> what they what would that say? The pen is mightier than the sword. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Wait, speaking of, I like I said, I know that Prince was a big influence on you. Did you ever get to meet him? No. Oh man, that's too bad. That's too. I'm it's, surprised. It, it was, the only, the only, the closest that I have even gotten to Prince uh, when he was, you know, alive was I think him and my dad. He he performed somewhere, and then my dad performed there probably like a day after the same stage. And and my oh, dad my. say he walked past him maybe once or twice, but back then he didn't, you know, he didn't look at Prince and like, well, man, you know, if if he'd have known I was a huge fan, of it, he probably would have stopped and said something to him. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. So how does this, from from a perspective of what you've witnessed in, in oh, and I'd like to focus on not just the music business, but the business, that, bu the business world in general, because you and your dad, you run Legends, you've got a recording studio, which I can kind of see the, the Prince influence on the logo there a little bit, maybe a yeah. little bit. <laughs> yeah. But um, but you and your dad, you've been running businesses. You've been in been in the music business. Um, how does how do, for Black History Month with everything that you both have experienced, the struggles, the victories, the changes, good and bad, how does this all hit you? What 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 does it all what all comes to mind as we celebrate this month? Well, uh, before. I went back home where my dad grew up at, uh, in a, in a little small town in Louisiana. He actually, we were on tour and we was performing there. And the place where he performed had enough room for maybe a hundred people. That's it. No, no more. Still had a tin roof on it. And when they cranked up, I mean, they was in the corner it and I looked, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I looked at my dad and, to see the surroundings where he grew up at and the people that was out there and how they, you, you know, my first time meeting them, this was my first time going to his, his hometown where he was born. I was in tears. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To see where my dad is now and what he went through, you know, to get to where he is. Like he, he has a saying that he says, it's a, it's a, what do he say? I don't want to say it wrong, but it's somewhere in the field where it's a, it's a long way from picking cotton to plan, picking the good side of the White House. There you go. You know, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it, it it's more touching than it has ever been. Like, you know, growing up in school, knowing Black History, because you hear about you know Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. You know, Black History Month, uh, Rosa Parks. You hear about all of this, and you know about it. But growing up, you you didn't know like that your own parent was a part of that same you know, thing. So I just recently, you know, witnessed that. Like I said, we just uh, went back to his hometown and it hasn't changed a lot. You know what I mean? He actually yeah. told me, uh, walk down the street and it's, it's like country road. It's just like country, real country. He said, if you walk down the road, down the street, he'll see, you'll see the, uh, well, where they used to have to take the, the cotton they pick and dump it in the, the stall or whatever it is. I told him, I said, I, I don't want to walk down there and see that. You know what I mean? Well, not because it was like shameful, 
it was just pitch, pitch black. You know, so I couldn't see <laughs> anything. I'm not gonna walk down there in the dark, but yeah, it was it was real. It was real touching. It, it, it hit me really, really hard when we got to his hometown, and then you know, and then speaking of black, you know, Black History Month, and like I said, you hear about all these these other people, and I'm like, man, my dad is along amongst the, you know, along with him as far as the struggle and getting to where he is. So yeah, it put me in tears. He saw me. He said I was crying out one eye. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just to even see him being honored at you know at the lincoln center that time oh my gosh and you know right. i still i'm a fan of his but i still am surprised the songs that he i didn't realize he was associated with you know and i, yeah. I it makes me feel like a, such a dummy you know <laughs> but uh but there you know the the accomplishments the and and what i would say greg and i'm sure you probably feel it a heck of a lot more than us fans do but the impact that the music has, and you get to be a part of that now. You're 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 helping run the family business, and you're you're touring with them, and you know working with them on all that. How does how does that feel to kind of get that mantle placed on you? Maybe while you and your dad both are under it. How does what do you feel about that? Is there a is there a a, a weight that comes with that, or or tell me how that it, feels? It's it's a it's a very little weight, very little, and I make it little. It's it's a it's a heavy weight, but I I make it little now. You know, I have to still right now today. I I I I do like probably like some of the fans would be like, man, I'm performing with my you know my dad, but you know, I, buddy guy, you know, and then to see all of these musicians that I listened to before I I knew my dad was buddy guy, and and I see him. So quick story, when we were at the uh, Kennedy Center, I had a friend. He told me, he said, I heard, he texted my phone. He said, I heard you was at the Kennedy Center with your dad. I said, yeah, I'm here. He said, man, Jimmy Page is going to be there. If you see Jimmy Page, I want you to bow down and say, I met the good time guy. I said, well, I can't remember what he looked like. It's been a while since the stairway to heaven. But uh, <laughs> send me a picture. So he sent a picture, and I look at the phone, and he's standing right next to me. And I go, Mr. Page. I said, I just got a text from my friend. He said, if I happen to see you, they say, I, I met the good Thai guy. He said, put your phone away. He said, I'm not the good Thai guy. He said, follow me. So I'm walking. I didn't ever get a chance to say uh, who my dad was, or I didn't tell him, like, oh, I'm here with Buddy Guy. I'm, I'm, you know, I didn't say that. We're walking, and I see the room where my dad is, and I was going to say, you know, and he reached for the door, and my dad was coming out as he was coming in, and he said, oh, Jimmy. He said, hold on, buddy. He said, now. Text your friend back and tell him you met the good talk God. And my dad wow. goes, my dad goes, I see you met my son, Jimmy. And Jimmy say, wait a minute, you his son? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was, so, you know, I, stuff like that. I'm just like, wait a minute. Jimmy Page and it, a lot of them, Jeff Beck, I met him. You know what I mean? I had an opportunity to meet him and they all gracefully bowed down to my dad. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's, it was a heavy weight, but I see what I got to do. I, I had to work out with it, you know, and I'm yeah. still working out with it, you know. <laughs> they're they're bowed working. down to the guy that whipped your butt a few times, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing, though. You, you know, like, it, you know, people say, I know you having fun out, you know, on tour. It's not fun. You know what I mean? It is fun, but it's like people think, like, because you 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 in California, sunny California. Oh, no, no. It's, it's, it's work. It's, it's you own that bus, you unload that bus, you in the hotel after the show, and we own that bus three, four o'clock in the morning, next day time to go. If we get two days off, we go out to eat, you know what I'm saying? And and that's pretty much it, because it's not like we can say, let's go, let's go to a movie, let's get popcorn and go to a movie. So we have to make the best the two days we're in the hotel and we all get together, we might go out to eat. And I always be uh I always uh I'll be funny with my dad because he'll say, We go into this place, and I tell him, like, well, he normally goes with his managers. And he'll say, we all going to eat. And I look at the band and say, no, nah, Dad. I say, I'm sticking with the band. We're going somewhere else. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, uh, we're not going to go with y'all, so we'll go that way. And we kind of sometimes go our separate ways, and sometimes we all stay in the same way. But it, it's, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, just, and, and, and still today, I, I, I'd be a nervous wreck. You, you would think, like, with a year time and the time that I uh, travel and perform with my dad that I would be used to it. Oh, man, 
And when I'm backstage before I go out there, man, they see me pacing. They be like, what's wrong with you? And I'll be by him. You just don't get it. This is buddy guy. <laughs> y'all. So, you know, it's pretty much, it's cool, though. Like I said, it was in the beginning a heavy weight, and I would run. I would run from it like, oh, no, I can't I can't do it. But it was that one time uh, he called me out to play at a place called Shaw's Crab, Shaw, Shaw's Crab Shack or something. And it was sort of cold outside. And my hands, they got so cold that they were moving so slow on the good side. I leaned over to him. I said, how do you do it? You know, he said he's he been doing it for some years. So he used to it. And he said, I need to talk to you. And I was like, uh-oh, I did it now. And we get in the limo and we leave. And he said, hey, whatever you did when you was playing on stage, he said, keep it up, man. He said, it's different. And, and I like that. So then I'm like, okay, you know, all right, well, I, I got you, you know. But like I say it was heavy. It was heavy because it was time I wouldn't even want to play because I'm like he was gonna tell me, if, you know, I can't get you back out there with me. Uh, go learn how to play. You know, saying you, know, you practice and all this and all that. He never once said that. He just when he finally heard me, he was like, "Man, whatever you doing, don't stop." You know, I'm talking, okay. That's, that's so cool. That's so cool. <laughs> I was that close to him once. He was. I, I live in Sevierville, Tennessee, up in the Smoky Mountains. And uh, a few years ago, my cousin and I went to go see him perform in Knoxville. And you know how he gets out on the out in the crowd and yeah. got the guards by him and all that. Greg, he walked that far from me. I mean, just uh, it was like I I want to just reach out. I mean, because I love the blues. I wish I could play him. I just listened to him. I just wanted to touch him. I thought, uh, uh-uh, uh, man. I, you know, first of all, I didn't want the guards breaking my arm. But yeah. you know, it's just like there is that awe a reverence for what he has done and what he's contributed and still doing it at this age. I just, oh, yeah. that's a testament to his strength and to his work ethic, his talent and his drive. And wow. Yeah. I mean, what a, so you're still touring with him, right? You, I see yeah. that you guys are getting ready to hit the road again. I, I think you're going to be over on the other side of the mountain from me in Cherokee, North Carolina yeah. at the, the casino. Yeah, there. He, he 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 mentioned you know he he say you know he say stuff like uh the other night two nights ago we were we were at, uh the, the legend performing and he at the end he said on the stage he said well he said I tell y'all what he said if I don't go back on tour he said y'all can always come here and see me perform you know what I mean and mm-hmm. I was like hey well it's up to him you know like cause we took off uh the beginning of twenty three in February and we went out we made it all the way up to November. You know, and and he had a little a little pain in his back, and he wanted to you know rest. So he canceled two months. He canceled uh, November and uh, November and December. Mm-hmm. So he rested up those two months with for January, right? You know, so for January. Well, good deal, good deal. Yeah. Well, I hope to catch you guys when you come to Cherokee, because that's just a short drive from me. Tell right. me about um, your other businesses. You've got this studio. You've got Legends. In addition to doing your own recording, uh, tell me about the studio. Tell me about Legends. What fans can expect? What artists can expect if they want to record in your studio? Oh well, it, it's open. You know, my my studio first. My studio is 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 open, and it's not like to the public. But I've recorded. I work with several artists here. You know what I mean? I, I I'm ready to put some of it, some of the some of the uh, uh, stuff that I'm working on with these artists out as a single as well as my own and. I just started working on, you know, my own single and I recently got signed to a label. So they going to put out a single on me, they say by spring, hopefully by spring, but I, it's going to be a big shock to them because they don't even, they don't know what I'm going to throw at them. They don't even know that it's going to be me and my dad on this single. They don't, they're not ready for it, but they will be <laughs> when they hear it. And my studio, like I said, it's open. If you want to do, uh, it's not like I'm just like, here for rock and roll or blues or jazz it's open for all of that if you want to record some jazz and you want to do your little uh singing and tracking a horn playing it, hey come come right down here to the g have and get it done very cool very very cool so what can fan i i've been to chicago but i never made it over to legends what uh what if i show up in chicago what would i see in legends if i walk in there now i've seen videos oh. i've seen when Rolling Stones played there a time or two, I think, a while back. And so, oh, yeah. I mean, Rolling Stones are going to be there all the time. But if I walk in one day next week, what would I, as a fan, expect to see in there? And what kind of food, that kind of thing? Oh, well, I, yeah, I'm going to start with the food. The, the, the food is based off of a, a Southern Creole style. 
You know mm. what I mean? Like uh, gumbo, jambalaya, stuff like that. Ribs. We got pretty, pretty good food there. I, I, I'm not just saying it because it's my, you know, my dad, my, you know, our place. But the food is really, it's pretty good there. And depending on the band, it depends on the band when you're there, when you, when you come there to see. Because we, we have so many great artists here in Chicago, and some of them uh, uh, haven't made it to the stage on Legends yet. You know what I mean? They waiting, and it, and it's to get them booked. It's like or, oh, we can't do it in March, but we could do it in September. And then we could say, oh, we got September full already. But we have some awesome bands that come there. And every Wednesday now, after the pandemic, every Wednesday now, we have anybody can come and play. Any Anybody who can play a, a flute, a guitar, a trumpet, uh, a shake, a tambourine, you can come down to Legends Wednesday and, and you will get up on the stage, guaranteed. All right. Uh, well, I say that. I, I, I don't know if you'd want me on the stage. I can't even do good hand bone, but I play a killer air guitar. I do do that. Right. So, <laughs> but you, if, if you like, if you ever, if you do come here, you got, you got, you know, text me, email me, or something, and let let me know. So that way, if I'm not in town, if I am out on the road with my dad, you tell me you in Chicago. I just call down there, and and you you set up. You be you be good. Well, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, so let's get to your music. We talked a lot about your dad. We're going to talk more. He needs to be on here, but I want to talk about you. <laughs> right. What, how, what genre do you, I know what you play, but for fans that are just now learning about you because of this interview we're doing, describe yourself to future fans. Who, who is Greg Guy and what do you play? So Greg Guy is a, a, a musician uh, uh, slash uh, songwriter uh pro producer and my my music is 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 open it's it's I, I i wouldn't label it i mean i, I could label it as i as i uh, arrange it compose it or whatever like i say i, I sit here and i'm like you know what i'm gonna do a blues song tomorrow i might want to do a, a a motown sounding song or the next day i might i do rock and roll i might want to get somebody to, hey bring your trumpet i got this little jazzy thing i'm doing it you know so it, it, it i'm open for it, for it all. Not, not saying I'm trying to like uh, 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 take over the uh, the music industry, but I have some nice stuff that I think uh, people would really, uh, you know, appreciate to hear and know, you know, where I'm coming from. That is uh, heartfelt. You know, what I mean, it's all mm -hmm. from from the heart. It's not like I'm just sitting there like, oh, okay, okay, let me make a blues song, and you know, and I put a lot of work into my blues song because I I want it to be different than uh, uh you know like the traditional blues, but I want them to at the same time like, hey. He stepped outside the box a little bit with the blues, but it sounds great, you know. Mm -hmm. Which is like the single that that I'm ready to put out. They they have an idea from that. They have an idea from that. Very cool. Very very cool. Um, so you like I, I you are 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 you? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I saw that you again that your dad's hitting the road. Are you touring with him on this tour, or are you not? I I was I didn't. All right. Definitely. Yeah, very definitely. cool. Actually. Uh, while we while we while we speak it now, I talked to him a little while before we doing this doom. Uh, he's uh, sending one of his guitars right now to uh, Memphis because he's getting ready to record. So he's sending you know the guitar that he only records with in Memphis. And I think it'll be two weeks and, and we'll be in Memphis for for that. You know what I mean? I don't know how far that is from you, and I don't know what part of Memphis just yet. But yeah, we'll be down there for that. I guess probably a couple of days maybe. Well, I'm, that Memphis is on the other end of the state for me. I'm on the east end of the state, and w Memphis is on the west end down there okay. where Elvis lived and all that. But I'm uh, I'm on the east end of the state. So when you guys come through, I'll, I'll shoot Vicky a note and see about okay. catching up with you guys when you hit Cherokee because, um, like I said, that's just a short hop over the mountain. I'm in the Smokies, so I, okay. I'm a hillbilly. So, <laughs> but. Uh, Nothing wrong with that. Oh, I know. I'm I'm proud of that heritage. What else is on your radar for this year? What else you got going on? Well, uh, like I said earlier, I just I just got signed to a label, and yeah. uh, they want to put out a single. You know, they want to see what a single would do. You know, with me with a single. Uh, uh, hopefully, early spring, middle spring, sometime they look they shooting for. But uh, I'm working on it now. You know, when I have time off, I you know listen to it and. You know, like right. I'm writing to it, and I'm like, you know what? I, I wrote this song, and I, I I hear my dad's voice with this, you know, this music. So I was in this car with him, and uh, I I popped it in, 
and just let it play. And, and he reached to turn the volume up, which he never do. And he reached to turn the volume up and say, like, now you hear that right there? Said, Who is that? And I'm just like, what? And I'm listening. And I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> he said, really? He said, who played the guitar? I said, me. He said, the acoustic guitar? I said, me. He said, who played the uh, the uh, the harmonica? Billy Branch. You know what I mean? And who played the uh, piano? That was your keyboard player before he passed away. You know what I mean? So mm. it, it, I'm working on this one. This one I have to do because I had been trying to get his keyboard player when he was alive, Marty. Uh, rest in peace. And I asked him, finally, I said, man, I said, I need you to come over and do this piano on this track, on this thing, this um, this blues song that I'm trying to put together. And I hadn't been signed with the, the label before then, but this is what they're going to get for the single. Me, wow. Billy Branch, my dad, and Marty. Very cool. Not, yeah. What, uh, uh, I wasn't going to ask you this, and please forgive me. I didn't, you know, I, I, I don't like ambushing, but th- I think you might like this question. With what you've experienced on the road with your dad, is there a story about one of his songs that really means a lot to you, either from a, you know, a heartfelt feeling or yeah. something funny that's happened or anything like that? What Share a story, if you don't mind, but doing it's, that. Uh, it's the song Skin Deep. Oh, yeah, Daddy. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Skin, skin Deep. Uh, touches me a lot and it's, that's not the only one he have he have several you know several songs but it's it's something about uh uh that's the skin deep it, it, it's got a, a message a meaning you know behind it heartfelt like on the, they say skin deep underneath we all just the same you know what i mean so right and that could be like a uh that that song could have could have uh, been something for uh uh like a, a bad time to pick people up going through some some rough you know what I mean? Some rough yep. time, is, yep. especially with what's going on right now. And for him to say, uh, skin deep, you know what I mean? That underneath, we're all just the same. You know what I mean? Right. We got, yeah. So that that one, that one uh, touches me a lot. Well, I've seen a video on YouTube of you guys playing that. And it's like, oh, yeah. I, it, it brought tears to my eyes. I'm not just saying that. What a powerful song that is. Oh, yeah. Well, wow, oh, I'm yeah. glad to hear you mention that one. So. Well, anything else you'd like to share with fans of anything else you'd like to tell that you've got going on, like for people to be aware of? And by the way, when that single's released, if you want to, we can get back on here again and talk again about the single and and maybe some of the response you're hearing right away on it, that kind of thing. My my door will always be open to you, Greg. So be aware of that. But is there anything else you'd like to share with fans before we go? just keep your keep your uh your eyes and your ears open. Yeah, wow. keep that in. The end. And I'm uh, hoping I'm doing well. Hoping I'm doing well. Big shoes to fill, but we we should be all right. We should well, be all right. I love how you sounded, or I wouldn't be asking to talk to you. So I I love how I love your sound. I love your work that I've heard so far. Hopefully, I'll catch you in Cherokee when you guys are performing. That's a wonderful theater, by the way. I don't know if you've played there or not. I think it's. No. I think it's 3,000 seats. It's right in the middle of the casino. You got to go upstairs to get to it. I've seen two concerts there, Alice Cooper and Boston. You're going to love it. It's great. And so um, when when you guys are there, I hope to see you there and maybe sneak backstage and uh, shake your all's oh, hands. You, you, you ain't got to sneak. I'll I, I bring you back there. All right, <laughs> man. I would love that. Well, listen, yeah. if, uh, if I can ever be of any uh, help to you, Greg, you and Vicky, your dad, please reach out to me. My door is always open to you. I appreciate it, man. And all right. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But appreciate hey, it. I think this logo is pretty darn cool itself. So yeah. very, yeah. very cool. Listen, my friend, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll be talking soon. All right, man. Take care. Bye-bye. You, thank you. Bye.